Welcome to another celebration of the 50th anniversary of Title IX. I'm Jordan Griffith, and joined with me today is head coach for Kennesaw State's women's lacrosse team, Laura Manis. Coach, I appreciate your time today. I appreciate it as well. Something I always want to open up with, talking about Title IX. In your mind, what does Title IX mean to you? Um, you know, in my world, um, when I think of Title IX, I immediately think of sports, right? And I know... Um, There's a much broader scope to what Title IX does, but in my corner of the world, it's an opportunity for our female athletes to participate in athletics, um, you know, at a high level. Um, And so that's kind of how how I view it from a day to day standpoint. Um, And um, yeah, I think it's created amazing opportunities for the women I've coached over the years. Speaking of your coaching ranks, you've been through all of the ranks, all four levels, and most coaches don't even get to see two of them. And you've been able to coach at high school, D1, D2, and D3. So being able to coach at all those different levels, all those different schools, how has that kind of helped you as a coach in your maturation process? Yeah, I think um, starting the climb from a high school level all the way up to D1 has been um, a good growth experience. I've grown into my position that I have now, um, you know, at at a D1 institution. And so for me, I was able to kind of learn along the way, um, on a smaller stage and, um, that's been beneficial to me, not only just learning, um, you know, lacrosse specific systems, um, and, you know, my approach and philosophies and game and the X's and O's, but also just learning and growing as far as, um, you know, being the team manager essentially and how to manage a roster and team culture and how to kind of bring all those other pieces into the program, as well as the X's and O's um, to make sure that we have a successful um, season every season. And so um, I'm grateful that I kind of started on a smaller scale and worked my way up. And I think, um, that it's, it's, it's really been a fun ride, um, going that way and, and kind of, um, you know, learning as I go and, and shallow into deep end, I guess. <laughs> what are some of the similarities or some of the differences that you've been able to see through all four of those levels? What are some of the things that have stayed the same and what are some things that are drastically different? Um, as far as things that have stayed the same, I think that you have, competitive athletes at each level that want to be the best that they can be. They want to win their conference. Um, they want to go to NCAA. So I think that's consistent. Um, you know, the level, um, certainly the level of competition is different, but the competitors inside of each person is really the same. Um, and so I think that, um, at each level, the other thing that is similar is the team culture pieces. Um, your team spends a lot of time together on and off the field and the teams that have success, regardless of the level are the teams that, um, truly love each other off the field, get along together and would do anything for each other. I think that that's really consistent across each level that I've coached. Um, and I think the differences are really, um, you know, some of the, the level of play, the color, caliber of play and the level of coaching. Um, you know, I am going against coaches, um, at the D one level that aren't at that aren't in their infancy of their career, but have been doing this for quite some time and some big time legacy coaches, um, that, you know, um, they can pull out every trick in the book because they've probably done it already. And so, from a tactical standpoint, um, you know, I've, I've gone against some coaches that have really, really been smart with their in-game philosophies and approaches to play. Um, so I think that that varies a little bit based on, you know, um, as people grow into their careers and get better positions at, at bigger schools. Speaking of coaching in your infancy position as a coach, you started in high school or not started coaching in high school, start coaching a high school team while you were in college, as far as my knowledge goes, didn't play collegiately. So how did you get into lacrosse and how did you decide coaching was for you? 
So I um, grew up in a hotbed of lacrosse. And I think that's one of the, you know, things that um, was really highly sought upon at the time was when I went to kind of, I went to college in a non-traditional region for lacrosse. And obviously there's still regional separation of, um, of how we're growing the game even now, you know, however many years later. Um, and so um, the local high school was was quite happy to have me because I had played a high level of lacrosse growing up in the Philadelphia suburbs. So um, I was able to utilize my skills because I had the benefit of really strong coaching um, throughout my, you know, middle school and high school career. Um, from there, it was really just supposed to be, you know, a hobby. Um, you know, I was in college to um, I have my degree in nutrition. I was going to be um, a registered dietitian with the hopes of working with um, sports. So, um, and, and mainly doing the, you know, obviously sports performance piece with nutrition. Um, so, um, interestingly enough, kind of just kept plugging away at lacrosse and opportunities kept coming for specific for lacrosse. And, um, so, you know, I, I think I always knew I wanted to be in college athletics and, um, but I just kind of evolved into a different role. Um, so kind of happened by, ha by accident, but you know, um, that's a, that's a good thing. So, so if any of your players ever have nutrition or <laughs> diet questions, they come straight to you. Is that right? Uh, well, only if they, you know, sometimes I tell them what they don't want to hear. So, um, we definitely have a, a we like our sweets on, on the team too. And everything is, is fine in moderation, but yeah. <laughs> Got it. Okay. What is a team coached by you look like? What, what is the coach Manus mantra when you get to a program, what is the one thing, or maybe the couple of things that you want to implement into a team? I think hard work, um, kind of a blue collar mindset, I think has been really the um, backbone of all the teams that I've coached. Um, really, um, a lot of the times we're, we're not getting the five-star recruit, um, you know, from a tra traditional area. I've only worked in non-traditional locations. Um, and so um, a lot of the girls that I recruit have kind of um, a little bit of a chip on their shoulder to prove themselves that they, they belong at this level. And so that's been and to work really hard and outwork our opponents. And so that's been really kind of the brand of what I've been putting on the field in my entire career. Um, you know, and, and then additionally, we recruit like the total player. So, um, you know, our, a lot of our athletes are super highly academic. A lot of our athletes, um, you know, have internships, have jobs, have, um, you know, family obligations, um, different, different things like that. Um, so I think for, for us, we really want, um, we really want to recruit someone that's a lacrosse player, but also involved in their community, involved academically, um, involved in the, potentially involved in their church or their religion. And so we have a really broad range of, of who we bring in. Um, but, you know, really a complete person is what we're looking for and a very good lacrosse player on top of that. Well, it certainly does help on the field, but talking about being able to groom these athletes that are going to be tremendous people and tremendous workers outside of lacrosse when their days are done, how important do you take that role as a coach to try and groom them to be these tremendous student athletes to send out into the world? Yeah, I think that's really important. I think a lot of the lessons you learn on the field are things that you can apply to the um to, to your career as you um, graduate on. And so, um, you know, I think that's, that's really important. That's something that we look to mentor our athletes um, if they want to pursue, you know, graduate school or med school or law school, or if they want to try to get employed right away. Luckily, um, you know, it's, it doesn't really all fall on my lap. We're lucky here at Kennesaw State that we have, um, you know, a character development coach. We have, you um, our student at academic services does a lot um, and with um, helping them kind of reach that next level or what that looks like and, and mentoring them with that and different career fairs and stuff like that, that they offer at Kennesaw State. So I'm lucky that it's not all on my shoulders because it um, there's experts in those areas that can really help 
kind of guide them in their career. But um, yeah, so, but it's been really cool to see, um, you know, pretty much every one of our seniors right now has a plan for next year. So they're pretty ambitious in, in regards to that. How important is it for not only for you when you were coming up through the coaching ranks, but also for your student athletes to see successful women in these authoritative roles? Yeah, I think um, a lot of um, female athletes across all sports maybe have never had a female coach. And so I think that um, lacrosse is a little bit unique in that the majority of our coaches, head coaches are females. Um, I think that sets us apart from some of the other sports in the NCAA. Um, but, you know, having walked a mile in their shoes, I think that, um, you know, it, it brings a different type of atmosphere. Um, and so I think it's important that they can see themselves in the position as well. If they want to become coaching, they see, um, you know, female coaches in these positions. And once you see it, you can actually believe that it could happen. Well, speaking of your student athletes, mandatory question about Sienna Gore. I talked to her mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. I mean, one of the best players, if not the best player in the nation right now. And I asked her about your, your kind of relationship over the years now that you've been able to coach her throughout her collegiate career. I would love to hear from your perspective. What has your relationship been with Sienna Gore over her collegiate career? Yeah, so um, obviously Sienna's great. Great player, um, works really hard for us and has since the day she set foot on campus. But um, Sienna's like, Sienna's a pro level. Like her mindset is pro level. And that's really the best way I can describe her. She's been focused and mature since she got on campus, um, both academically and athletically. So, um, she's not someone that, you know, relies on us to push her. She's very self-motivated to push herself. And so, um, we've really just kind of helped channel what is her natural abilities and her drive and her work ethic. Um, in a productive way. I think, um, you know, I think she'd be successful in whatever path she chose because of how she works. And we're just really channeling that, that energy and, and, um, helping guide her is really what our role is as coaches. Um, so yeah, I mean, she's doing great. She, um, on the field, you know, I think she just is now the fourth all time in goals. Um, cause she cracked the 300 goal mark which is really exciting. So she's fourth all time in the entire NCAA. I'm really proud about that. Um, and then, you know, academically, she, um, you know, is a master's student in engineering, which is no easy major. And she's really, really successful in that and has an awesome career lined up. So um, she's been able to kind of have it all, which is great. Yeah. Talking to our, our, our lunchbox series, the, the first one we were able to get rebooted she described kind of what she was going to do to me in terms of the, mm -hmm. the job at Lockheed Martin, I think is the name mm -hmm. of it. And uh, I had no clue what she was talking about, uh, but it's, yeah. it sounded very, very <laughs> it sounded very engineering. Like she's, she, she knows what she's doing. And that's uh, yes. certainly the, the, the student athletes that you're looking to recruit uh, the, those well-rounded individuals. Yeah, for sure. And so that, I mean, I know she's put in tremendous hours of work, you know, studying, off the field, um, on the bus, you know, she always has a book and a computer ready to go to get her studying done. And, um, so it's been really cool. Cause I think there's a misnomer, you know, out there sometimes that, you know, that maybe the D one rigors are too hard to also be academic. And, you know, I think a lot of our girls prove otherwise. Coach, I just have two more questions for you. One, how has title nine made the world better? Well, I think obviously um, the, the opportunities for um, our females um, are well-deserved um, and I'm excited that, you know, that we're in a place where, um, you know, where we're going to experience the same level of competition, um, the same um, opportunities for higher education as our male counterparts. I think that that's something that, you um, you know, just even, you know, in my, in my time, you know, my, my grandparents didn't go to college. So it's, it's interesting to see just, you know, and not that much time, how, how much we've improved 
as a society in that regard. And so hopefully we get to a time where, you know, it seems um, like, of course this would happen, you know, and, and not having to think about it. And I don't think we're quite there. I think that there's still a lot of um, improvements that can be done, um, but we've certainly come a long way. And I wanted to ask this one earlier, but I wanted to save it for the end to wrap it up. Being a nutritionist, a dietitian as yourself, talking about those sweets and those guilty pleasures, what, what's yours? Oh, gosh. Um, a cheat snack. I really like pizza and I really like chocolate. So those are my, my two things that I really enjoy. So A traditionalist, the pizza yeah. and chocolate, nothing fancy. Absolutely. So yeah, definitely have your, everything's fine in moderation, right? So. <laughs> Got it. All right, coach. I appreciate your time All so right. much commemorating the 50th anniversary of title nine. Best of luck this season. You guys are playing great ball. I appreciate your time, coach. Thank you so much.